Hi everyone, in this video I'd like to take a look at a piece of pseudocode and see what's happening when uh, we set some particular values here for x and n. So let's start at the beginning. Um, we're going to let x and n be integers greater than 1. And we're going to start off by letting t equal 0 and s equal 0. We enter a for loop, and this is a, a loop with index i. So we have 4i in the set 1, 2, 3, all the way up through x. And in this particular problem, we're going to let x equals 4. So I could actually go over here and uh, just make a note of that. So instead of this just being any old x, I'm actually going to set that to be 4. And then we enter another loop, and this is 4j in the set 1, 2, 3, all the way up through n, and in this case n is going to be equal to 5, so I could just put a 5 there, and then that makes it a lot more concrete to work through. Um, inside both of those four loops, we've got t equals t plus x, um, and that's going to happen here all for the, the j loop, so that's all sitting inside that loop for j. Once we've looped through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, we then exit the J loop and we'll set S equal to S plus T. Once we've done that, then we go back up and we work on the next increment for index I. All right, so let's make this a little bit more concrete. So we're going to start off. I'm going to work through the trace of the algorithm. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to start off, and I'm going to let t equal 0, and I'm going to let s equals 0. And the first time I hit this 4i in, i is going to be equal to 1. And now I come down and enter the j loop. So for j equal 1. And I'm going to put that in the next column here, and you'll see why in a minute. All right, so now what are we going to do? We're going to set t equal t plus x. So t is currently 0, so t is going to be equal to 0 plus x, which is set to be 4. So t equals 4. That's great. We've got a value for t. And we have to keep looping through j. So now when j is 2, I have to do t equals t plus x. So t equals, well, the current value for t is 4. And I'm going to add x to that. So that gives me a new value for t, which is 8. Still looping around in j, so j equals 3. I've got to keep going with that j until I hit the end point, which is 5, so I've got a couple more loops to go. Anyways, j equals 3, and we need to do t equals t, which is currently 8, plus x, which is still 4. And we loop around again, j equals 4. So t is going to be the current value of t, which is 12, plus x, which is going to be 16. And lastly, j equals 5, and we'll get here current value of t, which is 16, add x, which gives me 20. So the net effect here is that I added whatever my starting value of t was, I added 16 to get to the end. So that's kind of an interesting observation to keep in mind is that each trip through the J loop, we're going to be adding 16 onto our amount. All right, anyways, we exit that, and now we set S equal to S plus T. So S, let me get a different color. S equals S plus T. So S is currently 0, and T is 20. So now s is 20, that's great. And now we repeat the whole process with i equals 2. So another trip around, I'm going to let i equals 2, and I'm just going to write etc, etc. Now, I've got a nice, neat way to keep track of this. You can keep writing it out on paper, um, or you can just get a little table in Excel or something like that. I've made one in Excel. Um, 
Excel, you could do it in Word, doesn't really matter. But let's put in the important information here. So I've got a column for I and a column for J. And what we've done so far is we let J loop around all the way up through 5. And we got some values here. Oops. 8, 12, 16, and 20. And then after we finished all of that, we said S equals S plus T and S was 20. All right, now we come down and we're going to let I equal 2 and we're going to play the same game with J. We're going to loop through all these values for J. And so the first time we come in here, we're going to let T equal T plus X. Well, T is currently 20. So adding 4 to it is going to give me 24. And I don't do anything with S at this point. I keep going. And again, I see this net impact is I added 16 each time I do a trip through the J loop. And then I keep track of S. S is the old S plus T, so that's going to give me 20 plus 40. Give me 60. And so if we keep on going here, Um, we can get to our final answer, which turns out to be 200 for the values that I have chosen. Okay, so we've got our final answer here. I'll just put it in a, another color. Um, our final answer was 200. Now the next thing we could ask ourselves is, um, you know, how many additions are there? So let me make a new spot on my screen here. So how many additions? And this is in terms of n and x. Well, we can take a look here. In the uh, J loop, we do n additions. Then we do one more addition with the S. So we get one more addition. So our total so far is n plus 1. So I've, I've taken care of all this business. I always count my operations from the inside out. Um, it's just a lot easier to do it that way. And uh, all of that code is sitting inside the I loop. And the I loop runs around X number of times. So we have to use the multiplication rule described in our textbook. So let's write this down. The I loop occurs x times and so we will use the multiplication rule we've got x times n plus 1 number of additions and that's our final answer uh, in terms of how many operations we did with this code I'll just put a, a little bubble around that so we have that there